All right, welcome back. Okay, we're gonna find the average value of the function uh, over this interval, uh, and then all values of x for where the function actually equals uh, its average value. So let's find the average value first. So that's gonna be given by one over b minus a times the integral from a to b of our function. <clears throat> So we just gotta start plugging stuff in. So the zero is the a, b is the four. So one minus uh, b over a would be one fourth. And then we're gonna integrate from zero to four of x squared dx. So if we integrate x squared, that's just one third x to the third. And then we're going from zero to four. So a fourth times a third, that's just a twelfth. And then we've got to we need to plug in the bounds. So plug in the four. And then plug in the zero, which is nice. So we end up with a 64 over times a twelfth, <coughs> which would be 16 over 3. So that is our average value. So that was the first part. But then it also wants us to find all values of x for where the function equals its average value. And I have a lot of students that just get totally lost. You know, they just don't know what to do. Well, it literally says what you need to do. The function equals its average value. So take the function equals equals its average value. Well, what was your average value? 16 thirds. So if you just read this and literally write that down, then you've got an equation to solve. So square root it. And when you square root it, you know, don't forget about the plus or minus and then simplify it. And then rationalize it. And then the thing about this is um, you just want to make sure that every solution you get is inside of your interval. If you have one that isn't, just toss it out. So in our case, we don't need the negative, just the positive version. All right, so that's how you find the average value. It's not too bad because uh, if you can, can integrate, you can do this because you just have this extra little fraction out here that's pretty simple. So now that we've been evaluating these definite integrals using that shortcut, that fundamental theorem of calculus, let's ask a little question. What if the upper, or sometimes the lower bound, was a variable instead of a constant? Hmm. Well, let's see what happens if we do that. So let's integrate two minus t uh, dt. So that would be two t minus one half t squared going from two to x. So we're gonna do the same thing. We don't do anything different because this is a variable. You still need to plug it in. So two x minus one half x squared and then minus, now plug in the two. So four minus two, and we end up with two x minus one half x squared minus two. And the same type of thing would happen uh, over here. So the integral of sine, just be careful, it's not cosine, it's negative cosine. Going to pi over four, from pi over four to x. So plug in the x into x, and you get negative cosine of x, and then plus cosine of pi over four, and then evaluate cosine of pi over four. So root two over two. Okay, so simple enough. So example five, 
we're going to let capital F of X be the answers we got uh, from example four, but then we need to find its derivative. So now we're going to set F of X equal to uh, our previous answer. So 2X minus 1 half X squared minus 2. And now we need to get its derivative. So 2 minus x and then for part b same thing let f of x equal our answer from part b and then find this deri the derivative so what is the derivative of negative cosine positive sine and then that goes to zero all right, so do you notice anything about what just happened between these two examples? Well, look at what we started with, the function that was inside the integral, the integrand. Oops. <laughs> what do you notice about what I just underlined compared to your derivatives? Hey, they're the same. Almost. It's just that the integrand had the variable of t in this one, and it switched over to x in this one. So for what just happened, well, we got back to the original uh, integrand. Well. Whenever you do an oper a mathematical operation and then you apply another one that reverses it and gets you right back to where you started, what type of operation or what type of uh, relationship do those two things have? Well, they're essentially, you just found that they're inverses of each other. Like Ln and E, they cancel each other out. They go right back to their original. Um, multiplication and division they cancel each other out um, so it's kind of it's just it's the same thing um, and we establish that with indefinite integrals and derivatives well now we just establish that with definite integrals and derivatives So definite integrals and derivatives are inverses, and essentially they will cancel each other out. Uh, so we'll look at uh, that little theorem, um, that, or a little theorem that talks about that in the next video.